Are you ever tired of how hard life is? Like, do you ever get cuts or scrapes or bruises from all the sharpness, the sharp and hard edges of our reality? If you do, it's essential that you are able to move within. It's essential for you, for others, family, friends, lovers, and it's essential for the world and for the resources available on this planet. It's taken for granted that there is a real and solid outer world full of objects and jam-packed with real experiences. However, if you really look, that is not strictly true. While it is harder to see these days because we are really encouraged to be extremely outwardly focused. In fact, the world you enjoy out there is really something that you are enjoying within yourself. Your desires are outside, but the fulfillment of them happens within you. So much like an addict, we keep turning to the outer world and expecting to get the same thrill, the same level of enjoyment from all that we do. Or we fly past this stage because we understand that we gain a certain tolerance from things that we do repeatedly because they lose their novelty. So we try new things, or we take greater risks, or we mash this thing with that thing. And in a way, we corrupt our own simplicity. And no one's to blame for this. There is a certain logic to it. But on closer inspection, some people may begin to look at the self, the experiencer. Who is that in there that is not satisfied? What part of my being or my awareness is not finding the interest and the spark which I used to find in things like sex or my favorite food or my favorite activities or my career that I was passionate about. And there are volumes and volumes of literature devoted to the topic of what the self is, so much so that it can be confusing. But I really want to cut through the shit. To know the self is not a job for the mind. The mind confuses. It is not an intellectual endeavor. It is a simple endeavor. So last week I mentioned spells and magic, and our world is overflowing with a type of spell which keeps us in certain beliefs, locked in really, and these beliefs are formed from the collective, from the majority. What the majority believes that you have always taken for granted, or have often taken for granted, are things which are A, not necessarily true, and B, not necessarily, well, very unlikely, they are conclusions that you would not have drawn if left to your own assumptions. You just wouldn't have arrived at this reality in just the way that it is now. But because we have a mind which carries a subconscious fear for its survival, we become susceptible to carrying these beliefs out of a need to belong. Because belonging means community, and community means resources, and resources means things like food and shelter, protection and survival. Life. But logic this with me. It is well documented that we run these subconscious beliefs and need others to survive, and yet our tendency in the world is not to be cooperative. In fact, is to be completely individualistic and oftentimes really selfish. Just to illustrate a little bit of how the adherence to the collective fear splits a person into two opposing parts, into a type of insanity, ultimately leaving many of us feeling we cannot always trust ourselves. I mean, imagine that. We cannot trust ourselves. Maybe you trust yourself at work, but, you know, do you know 
what you will do in a high stakes situation where someone needs help, specifically help from you? Do you trust yourself around, say, chocolate cake? Do you trust yourself to behave logically when you're in a state of really severe panic or need? There's only one of you in there. Why on earth would you not trust yourself? Think about that. And I know this can sound a lot like intellectual jargon or, you know, maybe to some people even like woo-woo. <laughs> but you know who does not find this loophole of the lower mind, this animal mind to be bullshit? Advertisers, your government, your church, even if the individual members of these organizations do not know that they are participating in a sort of mind control or spells or propaganda, often they lazily toe the line of the collective decisions of a governing body within these organizations. And at one point or another in time, in all of these networks, experts on the human condition and the mind decided how best to help you swallow the medicine to become more easily manageable and more compliant in parting with your hard-earned funds and your logic. Now, in order to move inside, we need to adopt the understanding that we cannot intellectualize the transformation of ourselves from having a very real outer life, a very solid out outer world that requires us to rush here and rush there, to buy this and to know these news items and these statistics. We need to part with the thinking, with the endless inner dialogues, and simply engage with the experience of self. Please understand this. Concepts are one thing. Experience is another. And we are very good at fooling ourselves into having a concept and believing it's an experience. But we really do need to end this inner chatter and abide there in a silence, in an experience that opens up, which is completely indescribable, and yet as real as any car or house or monument or skyscraper. Then, when we are firmly planted in this awareness and this sense of being it gives, the mind itself operates from a sense which does not bend to the lower needs of the animal nature, but instead it grows into a state of peace, which leads to adoration of the experience with oneself and with others. To move inward blurs the lines between where I end and where you begin. And the more of us which take up this task of moving inward, the more indefinite the lines become between you and me and inner and outer and world and self, material, spirit. And that is when magic is able to slip into the world unseen. That's the proper conduct of magic and miracles, not by spells and enchantments and propaganda. Magic can only arrive in the little crevices we manage to create between the real and the unreal and the inner and the outer life. Miracles don't just show up unless you make room for them. You make space. You remove something. Thoughts, words, definitions, realness. You make space for them. Magic is not done unless you look away or look inward. Then the trick can be performed. Move in with me. Move in with you. Lose your sense of inner and outer. Rely on the inner resources and that world that has been cutting you and scraping you and running you ragged will be softer. The edges will soften, become more rounded. Things will slip and slide easily between one another. You'll find easier passage. This message has been magnetized with attraction. And I hope it brings you some joy and something to think about. Have a great day.